Fear Not, Episode 40. Hi, I'm Billy Atwell, and I believe that consistently facing your fears is the only way to realize your truest self and to make those confident choices that will help you to obtain your deepest held hopes and dreams. I have faith that this podcast series will show you that you are not alone, that it will strengthen you and give you courage to face your fears, and that it will help you to permanently cross over into a life of living beyond your fears. Join me on this journey as we listen and learn from others as they share their experiences in facing and overcoming their own fears. Hello, everybody. Today, you and I are going to be joined by Harry Lorraine. Hey, Harry, how are you today? I'm uh, about on a scale of 10, about a 6, I guess. Which is not bad. It could be worse, right? True, true. <laughs> right. Well, thank you for taking time to come on the show today. I really appreciate it. It's my pleasure, sir. Harry is an American magician and a memory training specialist. He's also a writer who was called the Yoda of Memory Training by Time Magazine. He is well known for his mnemonic demonstrations and has appeared on numerous television shows, including The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. His book, The Memory Book, was a New York Times bestseller. His card magic, especially his innovations in card slights, is widely emulated by amateur and professional magicians alike. Harry, can you take a few minutes to fill in the gaps and maybe give us a brief glimpse of your personal life? Well, you kind of said it. Uh, every, uh, I have two main interests in life. Uh, that, that, that's uh, card magic and memory. Uh, my first love was card magic, and that kind of got me into the memory field. Um, I know when we were sort of talking before this interview, you had mentioned that you had an interesting story about a fear that you had faced as a child that actually paved the way for your who you are in your career. And I was hoping maybe you could share that story with us today. Yeah, be my, my pleasure. Certainly, when when I when you asked about fear, that's obviously the first thing that came to my mind. And I, I've written about this. You know, I wrote a uh, memoir. Uh, Mel Brooks, who's a dear friend, he told me to call it a rememoir. <laughs> so anyway, it's called Before I Forget, and I told this story when I, you know I was on, I was doing a television show, Billy, and the uh, host said to me, Harry. How does somebody like you, you know, uh, like you said, a D's, Dems, and Do's kid from the Lower East Side of Manhattan with only one year of high school, that means not, not very much education, how does somebody like you become the memory training specialist uh, uh, of the world? How does that happen? And I said, stomach cramps. And he turned white under his makeup. You know, he, he thought I was going crazy. And we went into a commercial, and I said, no, 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 don't worry. It's a cliffhanger. I'll explain it. And then when we came back on the air, I told this story. When I, when I was very young, Billy, I'm, I'm talking about uh, 10 and a half, 11 years old, I had stomach cramps every morning. And I thought that was a way of life, that everybody had stomach cramps until I realized that it, it only happened Mondays through Fridays, not weekends, not Saturdays and Sundays. Then I realized it was school days. And then I started to realize why stomach cramps, why I was so frightened. My teacher at that time, and I'll never forget her, her name was Mrs. Goldfisher, and she gave us a 10-question test. Every day, on yellow rectangular pieces of paper, numbered from one to ten, and then she would ask the questions, we'd answer them, and she would grade the uh, the papers. And then we had to take them home for at least one parent to sign them. And I was getting terrible grades. I was getting 40s and 50s, you know, failing grades, while all my little classmates were all getting passing grades like 70 or 80 uh, percent. And uh, anyway, uh, th when I took it home, this sign me was my father, who died when I was 12 years old. So you, you can see how far back I'm going. And when he saw the failing grades, he would hit me. That's what was frightening me every morning. Every day, I was worried about getting hit by my father. And that is what uh, what gave me the stomach cramps and one day uh, what uh, i call these pivot points something that changed my life 
I was walking to school and suddenly the light bulb, you know, the mental light bulb went off. And I said to myself, you know, the only reason I'm getting these terrible grades is because I can't remember the answers to the questions that Mrs. Goldfisher is asking. Uh, at that time, you know, I'm dyslexic, but at that time we didn't know that word, or at least I never heard it before. I didn't know if people were using it. And it's it's the cliche, you know, to give you the name, you play the game. I was considered a moron, and I played that game. But that's I thought I was just stupid. But then I was saying to myself, wait a minute, if I could only remember those answers to those questions, all I cared about was not getting hit by my father. That changed my life because I went to the library. Uh, of course, also, let me interrupt myself and tell you that the, the kind of questions that you're asked on a test at that age, there's no intellectualizing them, even though I didn't know that word at that time. In other words, either you know it or you don't. For example, one of the questions was, what's the capital of Maryland? Well, again, either you know it or you don't. Well, I went to the public library near me, and I asked the lady if there were any books to teach you how to remember, that help you remember. She took me to a room where I think nobody had been in there for 100 years. <laughs> we had to wipe away the cobwebs to go in, and she pointed to a corner of the room, and sure enough, there were a bunch of books on memory training, some of them dating back to the 17th century, and some of which I now have in my private library. Anyway, I spent two or three hours in there reading those books. And again, let me remind you, I was 10 and a half, 11 years old. So most of the things I was reading, I didn't understand. But the little bit that I did understand changed my life. And I didn't realize that I was making new changes to the concept. In other words, all I wanted to do is change things so, so that they worked for me, so that I could remember the kinds of questions Mrs. Goldfisher was asking. And that's what happened. And that, like I say, all of a sudden I started to get hundreds in my, uh, my uh, tests. So at least, uh, well, I was about to say, so my father didn't hit me. He, he hit me for other things, but he started hitting me for the bad grades I used to get because now I wasn't getting bad grades anymore. And that's, like I say, that changed my life. It showed me I got interested in the idea of memory training systems. So that's basically the story, Billy. That, like I said, that was a pivot point in my life. Would you explain a little bit more about your memory training systems for those who aren't familiar with it? Well, you know, uh, you know, it's hard to put that into short words. Well, the memory training systems are exactly what they say. There are systems that help you remember. You know, the cliche is that we only use, generally speaking, we only use 10% of our memory and mental capacity, and I've written this in one of my books, that the truth of the matter is most people don't even use 50% of their mental capacity. And that's what I teach. I teach you how to, uh, vi you know, uh, God, how can I explain this in a short way? Uh, all memory is based on reminders. One thing reminds you of another. In other words, uh, uh, a face should remind you uh, of a name, a name should remind you of a face, uh, uh, things like that. A, a, a foreign word should remind you of the American, the English equivalent. So I teach how to remember, how to use that reminder principle, and also how to visualize things. That's the key. You know, it's not a new idea. 3,000 years ago, uh, Aristotle wrote the first sentence in one of his books was, in order to think we must visualize with images. And that's what I teach. I teach people how to visualize. Uh, that's about really all I can tell you without getting into an area that people all know what I'm talking about. And I teach people how to remember lists of items. I teach school. Uh, I've written books for students where they can pass grades like I did with the story I just told you. And I've written the books for uh, business people, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So my systems, I have a cliche, even if my systems don't work, they must work. Now, that sounds contradictory, of course, but I know exactly what I'm saying, because they must work, because in order to try to apply my systems, 
like you are forced without realizing it to pay more attention than you ever did in your life. That's basically the key. If someone wants to learn more about your techniques and and the books that you've written, because I know like your first book was published in 1957. Um, that, yeah, that was uh, Superpower Memory, How to Develop a Superpower Memory, 1950. My gosh, I must have been only four years old at the time. Jeez. <laughs> 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 but go ahead i'm sorry i didn't mean to interrupt no 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 not at all i was just going to ask if someone wanted to you know learn more about your bibliography or your techniques or to get in touch with you what's the best way for them to do that well there, there are a few ways number one i also have the memory power course which is the closest thing to uh personal instruction by me. You know, I used to go out to corporations and they'd have seminars and I would teach a lot of corporations uh, use my systems, teach my systems as part of their training for their employees. Uh, but I got to the point where I got too busy. I used to send out people who worked for me, but then uh, I guess it fed my ego a little bit. People said, you know, they were very good, the people you sent to teach, but we want you, Mr. Lorraine. Well, that's nice. It fed my ego, but I could only be at one place at a time. So I put together what I called the memory power course with oh, a couple of DVDs and about five CDs and a manual, etc., with me personally doing the teaching on the uh, DVDs and CDs. Uh, so it's the closest thing to personal instruction, and people can learn about that at harrylorraine.com. You have to spell the name correctly, of course. L-O-R-A-Y-N-E is Lorraine. So it's harrylorraine.com. That's for the Memory Power course. Then if you want to find out about what, which ones of my books are available, like the Memory Book, Ageless Memory, which I wrote for older People, people with my color hair, you know, white, gray hair. Uh, and if you want to learn about books I've written for students, how to pass, how to not get failing grades all the time, you go to harrylorrainemagic.com. That's harrylorrainemagic.com. And there you can find out all, whatever, which of my books are available. Of course, quite a few of my books are out of print now. I wrote them that long ago, like you mentioned, the one I wrote back in, or was published back in 1956. So that's it, harrylorraine.com, harry com, and, and from any one of those two, you can always contact me personally, and I'd be glad to answer any questions I get. Are you ready for the speed round? Yeah, go ahead. What person that's either fiction or real has made the most impact on your life? Oh, boy, I cannot think of that. Listen, my closest friend is Mel Brooks. Uh, he and his uh, wife, Annie Bancroft, were my best friends with me and my wife. Uh, unfortunately, Annie Bancroft and my wife are both, are both gone. Uh, but we traveled together every summer to Europe, uh, all over the world for 40 years. They are the ones that forced me into writing what I mentioned before, my book titled Before I Forget. Uh, again, if you go to harrylorainemagic.com, you'll see that book uh, listed also. Anyway, I used to tell them stories about my life, and they would always say half facetiously, Harry, you got to write those things down before you forget. And that's where the <laughs> title comes from, you know, before I forget. So... So the first name that comes to my mind to answer your question, Billy, is Mel Brooks. I've been uh, quite fortunate. I, uh, I'm very friendly not only with Mel Brooks, but a close friend of his and mine, Carl Reiner, is a very close friend. Unfortunately, now we're coast-to-coast -coast friends. I'm on the East Coast. The two people I just mentioned are on the uh, West Coast. They both live in uh, California, and I'm friends with uh, Dick Cavett and ex-mayor of New York City. Uh, Mike Bloomberg is a close friend. Uh, so, you know, I've been very fortunate. To, and all these people, have, certainly Alan Alda is a very good friend, and he uses my systems all the time. As a matter of fact, one of the uh, quotes that he gave me to put on the back of one of my books, which I know by heart, he said, uh, Harry Lorraine, you can remember hundreds of thousands of things with Harry Lorraine, as, as well as you remember your, with Harry Lorraine systems, as well as you remember your first kiss. He said, and when I go on stage with hundreds of pages of text in my mind, 
those pages got into my mind via the method, the Harry Lorraine method. So Alan Alda and his wife Arlene are very good friends of mine. So all these people have made impressions in my life, obviously. If you could instantly change one thing in the world, what would that be? Offhand, I would like to get rid of stupidity. Uh, <laughs> that's the first thing that comes to my mind. The older I get, uh, I'd like to get rid of stupidity stupidity, and inefficiency. The older I get, and it's another cliche of mine, the older I get, the more inefficiency I see. So the first word that comes to my mind is inefficiency. I'd like to get rid of inefficiency. What's your biggest weakness? What's my biggest weakness? You know, I must have so many of them that I can't think of one offhand. Uh, uh, my biggest weakness, <laughs> I was about to say, is talking too much. Uh, uh, my biggest weakness, if I to want to go back, is the fact that I don't have any education. Which, But you know something? I once wrote, a, I wrote an article, and I've used this another cliche of mine, sometimes bad becomes good. I was about to say the truth. My biggest weakness is I'm dyslexic. And the older I get, the worse that dyslexia gets. But in, what, in this article I started to tell you about that I wrote years ago, and I've used the cliche many times, as many times bad becomes good. And being dyslexic, of course, is bad. But that helped me a lot because if I wasn't dyslexic, I wouldn't have had the bad grades I was getting when I was very young with my father. That whole story I told you before wouldn't have happened. Therefore, I wouldn't have been pushed in the, into the memory training area, which gave me a career, which uh, enabled me to write books that have sold 18 million copies over the years and that I've known all over the world because of something that started bad and ended up good. And that's uh, my uh, dyslexia. So uh, it's... Difficult to think of any uh, weakness. I was about to say dyslexia is a weakness. I imagine it is for a lot of people, but for me, the bad turned out good. What's your biggest strength? Well, of course, uh, my two loves. I'm considered one of the top. Oh, this sounds egotistical, but, but you know, at my age, I don't care. <laughs> Modesty is becoming a drag. I'll say it the way, uh, the, the truth. I'm considered one of the top card men, the card uh, teachers and writers in the industry. And uh, I'm just uh, using some quotes for a book that I'm just putting out, and it says uh, the best uh, writer in the history of magic. So that's uh, very important to me. And, of course, at the memory training area, you mentioned it before, Time Magazine called me the Yoda of memory training, and I'm considered the world's foremost memory training expert. So I guess you got to consider those are my strengths. And do you have a favorite sound? Applause. And what parting advice would you like to leave us with today, Harry? Uh, start reading the good stuff, like Harry Lorraine books. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, the ego is... You know, that's another thing. Another article I wrote about ego. Uh, I don't know if I can say this here, but the type, the uh, first sentence of the this article I wrote about ego was, why is it the word egotistical is always followed by the word bastard, egotistical bastard? Uh, because all people are always putting down ego. But ego is important. It's misplaced ego, that's wrong. But without ego, nothing would be accomplished. How dare somebody write a book? How dare you think that other people want to read what you wrote? That's ego. So without, like I say, without ego, uh, nothing would be uh, accomplished. But like I say, it has to be not misplaced ego. It's got to be good ego. So I, I don't know if that answers your question, but that's the best I can do. Sounds like pretty good advice to me. And Harry, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. I mean, having grown up seeing you on Johnny Carson, this has been a really big honor, so I really appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure, sir. Thank you for joining me today. And remember, you cannot achieve everything, but you do have the God-given ability to achieve anything. So stay focused, out of fear, and keep on keeping on. Until next time, be well and peaceful. For more information on today's episode and guest, or for resources that will assist you in overcoming your fears, visit livingbeyondyourfears.com. And don't forget to subscribe to this podcast, where three times a week we move to a life beyond our fears.